You want to go? It's already begun. Some celebs are touchy people. They're used to special treatment, and they can get pretty offended when they think that reporters aren't giving them enough respect. The celebs on this list did not enjoy their interviews. What are we doing? Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. I mean. Bye. They showed their displeasure by lashing out at the people interviewing them. Some stars were ruder than others. Hey, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Your problem, buddy? What every celeb on this list has in common is attitude. Now let's look at the top 10 celeb interviews that went terribly wrong. It's just awkward, Dave. Billy Bob Thornton got huffy in Toronto. I'll talk about whatever you want. I don't care. Billy Bob Thornton is a very good actor who gives memorable performances. You're pathetic. Angelina Jolie's ex-husband also dabbles in music. Yeah, Angelina. In 2009, he was touring with his cosmic cowboy band, The Boxmasters. During the tour, he did an interview with now-disgraced Canadian media personality Jean Gomeshi and got super offended when Gomeshi didn't follow his orders. Gomeshi wasn't supposed to mention Billy Bob's movie career when he introduced The Boxmasters on his CBC radio show, Q. This is The Boxmasters. This is J.D. Andrew, Mike Butler, and Danny Baker. This set the stage for a terrible interview where a moody Billy Bob managed to insult an entire nation by comparing Canadian concert goers to mashed potatoes without the gravy. It's mashed potatoes with no gravy, you know what I'm saying? Thornton was clearly huffy about Gomeshi's rule-breaking intro and took it out on all Canadians who made the dubious decision to spend their hard-earned money on Boxmasters tickets. To make the interview even more awkward and miserable, Thornton answered questions with the verbal dead end, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Later on, Billy Bob got hammered in the press and then tried to backtrack. He claimed that his negative comments were about the interviewer rather than the fans. He also said he didn't know the interviewer's name. Billy Bob does have an eccentric vibe. He isn't your typical actor who smiles big for the press and tries to ingratiate himself. He marches to the beat of his own drummer, for better or for worse. While he and Angelina were still in their lovey-dovey phase, they wore matching vials of one another's blood around their necks. Despite the blood pendants, he's claimed that he's way more normal than most people think. You don't really know what it's like to be a street person. Liking this video so far? It is uh, very pleasant to be loved. Hit that subscribe button and ding that bell to join our notification squad. I have explained this many times. Tommy Lee Jones stonewalled a reporter. Hey, this is the sanest we've seen you in quite a while. <laughs> That's very funny. Tommy Lee Jones is a wicked actor who has delivered some stellar performances. We can talk about something else. Remember when he hunted down Harrison Ford's character in The Fugitive? Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. Jones is an actor who's believable in every part. However, he's known as a notoriously grumpy interviewee. Tommy in this movie is Fifty Shades of Grumpy. He's obviously no fan of press junkets, and he will show his unhappiness by making the lives of reporters difficult. A press junket is a transaction action between a film's cast and the media. The movie stars are there to promote the film, which earned them huge salaries. The press is there to get sound bites and video, which helps their shows or publications to thrive and also promotes the movies. It's a quid pro quo, and most actors are gracious about the process. Almost forgot. It's tiring and boring, but necessary for contractual reasons and to give films a fighting chance at success. Tommy Lee Jones was less than gracious while promoting Men in Black 3. A nervous-looking reporter fired off one semi-dumb question after another. Did you like the progression of the character? And got stared down by the seasoned actor. I don't have a clue. At first, Tommy tried to answer the questions and even smile. Soon he went full curmudgeon. I long for the darkness. I pray for death. He wearied of the social niceties and didn't bother coming up with answers to the questions. There is a free mental health clinic at the corner of Lilac and East Valley. In one instance, he said he couldn't wrap his head around the question. Tommy looked like he wished the earth would open up and swallow him whole. <laughs> while the young reporter gestured with his hands as he spoke. This interviewer was desperately trying to keep a terrible interview alive, but the conversation was definitely DOA. Holy mother of God, oh, he's flatlining. Dave Schultz punched somebody out. Bring the whole family and line them up, because I'd like to slap about 15 or 20 of them. If you were a professional wrestler, would you slap somebody if that person claimed that wrestling was fake? I I'm surprised that I was confronting crooks all my life. Dave Schultz did. Dr. D got violent with a reporter named John Stossel in 1985. The hothead wrestler lost his WWF job as a result. Later on, Schultz attempted to write a book about his life and claimed that Vince McMahon blocked him every step of the way. Schultz did write a book but didn't talk smack about McMahon. He had been effectively silenced by the head of the sports entertainment 
entertainment organization. The interview that went very bad was a segment for 2020. Schultz claims that he was just following McMahon's orders when he roughed up John Stossel while the cameras rolled. You think it's fake? You talk like that? After the incident, Stossel gave a deposition which stated that he had permanent damage to one ear because of what Dr. D did to him. A uh, doctor now says I have ear damage that's probably permanent. Schultz says he never went near the reporter's ear. McMahon decided to pay Stossel 425000 bucks. Schultz has referred to his victim, John Stossel, as a whiner and a crybaby. Wimpy! Kitty baby whiners! Schultz says he wasn't charged with any crime after the interview and that he was never sued by the victim either. Vince McMahon wanted Schultz to reimburse him for the big bucks that he gave to Stossel, so he sued Schultz, despite already being a billionaire. It's all about the money! Lots of fans think that Vince did ask Dave to hit the reporter, but lied about it afterwards, as Schultz claims. I want you to go out, interview him, and blast him tear his ass up. Joan Rivers didn't like talking about her fur coats. I gotta show it to you, otherwise it doesn't go off my income tax. Joan Rivers has sadly passed away, but was full of wit, temper, and charm while she was alive. The doctor looked at me and looked at the afterbirth and handed my mother the afterbirth. <laughs> she was one of America's most famous and beloved comedians. If you can make a joke to make something easier mm. and funny, do it. When a CNN reporter took Joan to task for wearing real fur, the diva in Miss Rivers emerged with full force. Questions about her love for fur made her edgy, and she had to deal with other troublesome questions, too, so she decided to storm out of the interview. You are not the one to interview a person who does humor. Sorry. This happened in 2014, and the reporter, Frederica Whitfield, didn't seem overly concerned about Joan's hissy fit. We did kind of wonder. Hmm, was this a stunt? Maybe Frederica's concern about animals outweighed her desire to please Joan Rivers. Of course, the controversy created by Whitfield's line of questioning generated tons of publicity. Whitfield did provoke Rivers by needling her about fur. You know, this whole interview is becoming a defensive interview. However, Whitfield wasn't out of line. Wearing fur has become a hot-button issue, so Joan should have had stock answers to fur questions ready for rollout. The CNN reporter also questioned Rivers about fashion police and its practice of putting people down. Even with your fashion critiquing, while it's very mean in some ways. Joan denied that fashion police was mean. Whitfield kept up the pressure by letting Joan know that Joan's jokes about the deceased child of Casey Anthony were perhaps morally wrong. Rivers is usually thick-skinned, but all of this got to her and she fled. She was there to promote a book, and this clearly wasn't what she had expected. I'm very upset and torn. Kanye's slavery comments broke the internet. Kanye got me thinking. Maybe we're too quick to call stuff racist when we don't need to. Kanye West hasn't gotten where he is because he's just like everyone else. I refuse to follow those rules that society has set up. He's not typical, and sometimes he speaks without utilizing any sort of filter. So when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, Oh, but he's racist. Most of us take care to think before we speak, at least in situations where voicing outrageous thoughts can backfire. Not Kanye. I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. He says what is on his mind and then deals with the consequences. He went way too far when he said that slavery was a choice. Slavery for 400 years? That sounds like a choice. This was during an interview at TMZ headquarters. Basically, Kanye ignored the fact that an entire system was in place to procure, abuse, and keep slaves down. Do do you feel that I'm being free and I'm thinking free? He obviously felt that slaves should have risen up, even though their oppressors had all of the money and all of the weapons and the law on their side. West's opinion seemed to imply some sort of weakness or cowardice on the part of the slaves. It could be argued that slaves were the bravest people around. Yeah, well, you're white. You don't have to who had harder lives and just kept going. Anyway, Kanye's views were deeply offensive on many different levels. Brother, I am unbelievably hurt. The system created to keep slaves down didn't seem to be on Kanye's mind as he spouted off, but he paid for it all later. His own wife, Kim Kardashian, reportedly went nuts after Kanye talked about slavery. This time I wasn't so calm, but you know. <laughs> she yelled at Kanye because she was afraid that they would lose everything over his comments. Lots of celebs also unfollowed Kanye on social media. What he said was slavery was a choice, and that was just stupid. Overall, this interview gone wrong led to so much backlash. One TMZ staffer who was there while Kanye talked about slavery got really, really offended. Frankly, 
I'm disappointed. Kanye's comments during this interview hurt his reputation badly. I'm sorry I hurt you with my words, bro. Yeah, bro. I, I love you, bro. Involved. Beyonce hated being questioned about Jay-Z. Oh, gosh, listen to me. I'm about to start yapping. In 2010, Beyonce agreed to an interview with AJ Calloway from Extra. The interview started out okay, but it deteriorated because Calloway's questions got pretty invasive. Beyonce was visibly irritated when questions about her hubby, Jay-Z, didn't stop coming and got really personal. For example, AJ asked if Jay-Z wanted to have kids. Does, does Jay want to be a father? Does he want Are you serious? Mom? Bay looked pretty annoyed by that question. Beyonce is generally very gracious and ladylike in interviews, and she obviously wants reporters to act the same. People respect that I'm private. This means skipping the probing and personal questions unless she has agreed to do that type of intense interview. It's also possible that AJ Calloway touched a nerve in some way. Getting on my nerves. I have a knack for that. Reporters have to remember that celebrities have feelings just like everyone else. Beyonce found Calloway's line of questioning offensive, but Calloway didn't seem to care. The music diva bristled when she was asked about her husband and his feelings about fatherhood. The interview was really too personal because it's clear that Beyonce was not expecting those sorts of questions. She began to lose patience. I can't do this. Possibly, she wanted to preserve the sanctity of her relationship with her husband by not oversharing, and the interviewer wasn't making that easy for her. Also, the interviewer was putting the focus on her hubby rather than herself. Don't want people in your life and all your business all the time. It's the time and a place. Denzel Washington was so rude during a press junket. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. Would you have the courage to be really rude to a reporter during an interview that millions of people would eventually see? Denzel Washington clearly has a healthy ego as he didn't hesitate to behave in a very ungracious manner during an interview. None of your business. <laughs> This interview was held during a press junket. Exhausting, dull press junkets seem to bring out the very worst in actors and actresses. You know, I want to have a good day today. The person who endured this painful interview with Denzel was Layla McKinnon. She said she flew 12,000 kilometers to talk to him for less than 10 minutes. She chilled in a hallway of a hotel, waiting for her brief moments with the critically acclaimed actor. Thank God I get to use this. Jeez. He was apparently in a mood, as he didn't appear on time and was asking for tea from underlings. Anyway, Denzel eventually appeared for an interview with Layla, but it might be better if he hadn't. Is it just you, or are we waiting for someone else? Layla says you can't get too creative in press junket interviews because there just isn't enough time. She says Tom Hanks, George Clooney, and Hugh Jackman all try really hard during press junkets. Denzel was different. I don't have a mic, so I'll drop the glasses. He was there to promote his runaway train action flick, Unstoppable. She lobbed the usual shallow and non-threatening press junket questions at Washington, and he just wouldn't play ball with her. He wouldn't talk about the past. He wouldn't talk about the future. He was rude and disinterested. The interview is now infamous. She really didn't deserve such a surly interview subject, but Denzel did not care about her feelings. I, you gotta send me this clip. I wanna see what you what you put together. Okay. Chris Brown had a meltdown on GMA. It was real. Not, not, none of this is like fabricated. In 2011, Chris Brown let his legendary bad temper out while appearing on Good Morning America. He got angry because a reporter named Robin Roberts asked him about his violent attack on pop diva Rihanna. It seems like Chris wasn't expecting to be called to the carpet about that terrible incident on a morning television show. Roberts asked him about it over and over again, and he got so mad he broke a window, pulled off his shirt, and then fled topless into the Times Square area of New York City. Before he lashed out, he did an interview and also performed a song from one of his albums. The album is called Fame. After his tantrum, a New York Police Department representative let the public know that the police didn't go to GMA to investigate. Chris has trouble managing his rage, and his deep-seated anger comes out in nasty and negative ways. Maybe he felt blindsided by the reporter, but that's no excuse for what he did. I'm just gonna be honest. That's not me, bro. Robert Pattinson walked out because of K-Stew questions. It was so long. Yeah, it is, yeah. If you're interviewing Robert Pattinson, do yourself a favor and avoid asking him questions about Kristen Stewart. <laughs> Never take it seriously. <laughs> because he doesn't want to answer. During an interview at On Air with Ryan Seacrest, he dodged uncomfortable questions about K-Stew with a little help from his publicist. You can't ask that question to <laughs> the guy? It's, a, it's, it's a, his co-star. Ryan dove in and tried to get answers to the questions that everyone was asking. He wanted to know whether Robert was going out with his Twilight co-star, Kristen. Rob's publicist wasn't having 
any of it. The publicist jumped in and put a stop to the line of questioning. Once the publicist intervened, things got really awkward. Rob wasn't rude at all, like most of the celebs on today's list. It's not me, I tell the truth. But he still fled from the interview upon the instructions of his publicist. Before Ryan talked about fans and how they wanted to know what's up with Rob and Kristen, things were fine. Rob was kind and spoke to fans outside the studio and then went in to talk to Ryan. He said he feels obligated to please everyone that he meets because his character in Twilight means so much to them. However, he wasn't willing to override his publicist, who pulled him out of the interview within a few minutes of its start. He's like ultra polite, really formal all the time. Uh, let me open the door. Tom Hardy shamed a reporter during a press conference. I'm also a preemptive strike type of person as well. Journalists called Tom Hardy a spoiled baby after he got crabby during a press conference. He's known to be a little grumpy in interviews. He's a bit unpredictable, and an interview with him always has the potential to go downhill fast. <laughs> Tom was doing press at a Toronto film festival when a very brave reporter decided to ask Tom Hardy about his own sexuality. The reporter said that Tom's sexuality is ambiguous. Um, your own sexuality seems a bit more ambiguous. Tom clearly took offense and didn't mind shaming the reporter by asking him what he was on about. If looks could kill, the glare that Tom gave the reporter would have knocked the life out of him. The line of questioning was undoubtedly invasive and rude. Tom might not feel like his sexuality is anyone's business because it isn't. Are you asking me about my sexuality? And he might also feel that his sexuality isn't ambiguous anyway. This reporter wanted the big soundbite and took a big risk. Tom then turned the tables by questioning the reporter about what he was doing. What on earth are you on about? <laughs> of course, he didn't answer the reporter's question. Why? Why? Um, Thank you. you. Okay. We always try to keep our cool. All right, everyone, chill. So show us some love by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. And don't go anywhere. Stick around and click on another one of our great videos.